Welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show with naked truths and well-dressed lies. On David Mitchell's team tonight, I typically do a joke here about his Cockney roots, but I don't think that's appropriate. And besides, I don't want to mug him off. <laughs> it's Danny Dyer! <laughs> and a comedian who did Hispanic studies at university, partly so he could learn about the rich culture, but mainly because they were allowed a siesta in the afternoon. It's John Richardson! <laughs> And on Lee Maxstein tonight, she's the first voice I hear when I wake up in the morning. Insert your own joke. It's Moira Stewart. <laughs> and a comedian who provided the voiceover for ITV2's Magaluf Weekender, a sweaty, loud mecca for unpleasant, horny teenagers. ITV2 is available on most freeview boxes. <laughs> it's Joe Lysett. And so we begin with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before. They've no idea what they'll be faced with. And it's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. And John is first up. On a camping trip, I won an award for having the tidiest tent, even though I'd wet my sleeping bag. Please, <laughs> <laughs> teeth. <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, was this as a child or was this recently? <laughs> no, I was a child. How old were you? I guess I was about six or seven. And was it the Scouts? No. What was it? It was uh, the Woodcraft Folk. <laughs> what? The Woodcraft Folk? What kind of organisation is that? It's like the Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> is it literally about going away to craft wood, to make things out of wood? Is it more about just generally no. lighting fires and...? It's woodcraft in a more general sense. Uh... <laughs> what, what exactly is woodcraft in a general sense? It's, well, you know... <laughs> How do we know, John? Because I don't think you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's... Uh, wood... Um... <laughs> Do you want to change the name of the organisation? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say at every meeting of the Woodcraft. <laughs> so, so the Woodcraft folk, they, they head off into the wood together, they find a clearing, they set up camp, and what sort of things do they do? We might spot birds, we might rub trees. <laughs> do you ever spot trees and rub birds? <laughs> <laughs> Only if you don't want to get your tree rubbing and bird spotting badges. So there are badges? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, there were badges. What, what badges do you have? Did uh, you... Well, first badge would be sewing badge, obviously, otherwise all <laughs> subsequent badges would fall off. <laughs> <laughs> then. Bird spotting. Bird spotting badge. Tree rubbing. Tree rubbing. Tree rubbing, tree, tree rubbing was just to chill what? out. It can't all be about getting badges. <laughs> <laughs> all right, how many people were on the in the competition of tidiest tent? Uh, fifteen. <laughs> Did he just suddenly go back to childhood? <laughs> fifteen. <laughs> That's more like it. So fifteen kids all trying to have the tidiest tent. Well. Not that, not an exclusive, but we stayed in tents and to instil uh, an atmosphere of tidiness, every morning there would be tent checks. Tent checks. And whoever's tent was the tidiest right. would be How rewarded. How many boys per tent? Not just boys. Boys Whoa, and girls. Whoa, hang on a minute. <laughs> These were mixed tents. I shared a tent with my sister, who was also in the Woodcraft folk. How did the other Woodcraft folk react to it? <laughs> They never found out. Did your sister find out? Yeah. She was aware, yes. <laughs> she was one of the first to be aware. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they gave you the prize to sort of patronise you, so because they felt yeah. sorry for you? A prize is a prize. <laughs> <laughs> so other than the swampy conditions, it was, it was very nice and very tidy. Yes, the tent was very tidy because everything was outside drying off. <laughs> What do you think, Lee? Is he telling the truth? I don't know. What do we think, Moira? I think it's true. You do? Yeah. Why do you think it's true? He looks like a bedwetter. Well, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, 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 there are 
best thing is, when you say it, it sounds like news. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's probably true, You're yeah. You're pretty much true as well. We'll say true, then. He's going to say true. OK, John, truth or lie? Why would I admit on telly <laughs> to such a true... <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. John did win an award for the tidiest tent, even though he'd wet his sleeping bag. <laughs> Joe, you're next. OK. If I'm ever walking alone at night, I call out the name of an imaginary dog to deter any muggers. <laughs> David Steve. What's the name of the yeah. dog? Brian. <laughs> Brian. Brian. If it's going to be a vicious dog, it would be Brian, wouldn't it? Definitely. Yeah. Um... And do you think a would-be attacker would, from the tone that you say Brian, know that you mean a dog and not a Brian? <laughs> To me, it sounds like you'd be calling a, you know, a middle-aged civil servant. To you. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it's because I read an article um, with, uh, written by Darren Brown in which he said if you're in a situation where things look like they're getting a bit choppy, if you do something unusual, the other person is so sort of freaked out by that that they generally stop doing what they're doing if they're being a how, how do you shout? Imagine I'm a terrifying would-be assassin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, in your whole panel, maybe you're not the first choice for that. <laughs> John, imagine if John was... Um, so, all right, imagine Danny is a terrifying would-be assassin. Yes. And, do you know, go for it. Brian. <laughs> You don't no, want to attack me now, uh, do you? No, that's <laughs> terrifying to me. <laughs> is it just someone comes up to you at night, you know, makes ask for the time, you go, Brian, you just flip out, or is it a general mugging? I like you, Danny. Um, <laughs> everyone's got their own showbiz personas, and you and Danny completely gone for different ones, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're very similar in many yeah, ways. Yeah, no, I do, I do. <laughs> we're lovers. <laughs> Danny, stay uh, calm. Who you push me? Stay calm down. Calm down. Oh, you had to start shouting, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> Just say, Joe, you're playing with fire there. I'm leaving. <laughs> The thing think is true. Think read a Darren Brown well, book for a start. Is, is that sort I, of I believe the Darren Brown article, but the whole point of that is that you say something random that sort of puts people off their stride. Whereas you're going for something specific, calling upon a dog called Brian to come to your aid. But that's immediately disprovable. The absence of Brian is immediately <laughs> evident. That's, whereas calling upon Brian, they're going to go, Brian? Oh, there's no Brian. Fine. <laughs> My big sticking point is still, if you were trying to create the illusion that you had a dog, why you would give it a person's name? Yeah. Would you shout dog? You'd or... shout like... What? <laughs> like, no, like uh, dog. Rover or Fido. Yeah, that would be yeah, good. Yeah. If you had a dog called Dog, dog that would... <laughs> dog! <laughs> dog! <laughs> what would you call him, John? Rambo, well, Tyson? Well, my, my defence is slightly different. I would wet my pants. <laughs> So, what are you thinking, David? John. I don't believe it. Danny? Well, uh, so I, I, think, I think it's true. You think it's oh, true? I don't think he's oh, a... He's a uh, now, I don't, now I have to make a decision. <laughs> My gut is that it's not true. Let's go no, then. Let's have a okay. lie. Let's say lie. You're going to say lie? Yeah. OK. Joe, truth or lie? It was a lie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was a lie all along. Joe doesn't call out the name of an imaginary dog to deter muggers. Danny, you're next. It's a possession. All oh, right, OK, there's a box under the desk. Now, if you could, first of all, read the card out that's in the box... All right. ..and then take out the possession and pop it on the desk. Last year, on a visit to the zoo... <laughs> 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 Last year, on a visit to the zoo, I put on a mask so that no-one would recognise me. This is that mask. But no need to be quite so aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> Could you put it on your face, please? Yeah, no, I'll whack it on you, cool, sure. yeah, Let me have a look. <laughs> <laughs> now, can I just hear you say, 
two ice creams, please. <laughs> uh, can I get a couple of ice creams? <laughs> Asking, but aren't you Danny Dyer? Danny Dyer? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, now. Can I, uh, can I take it off? Now? Yes, of course yeah. you can. <laughs> so, where did you get that mask from? Huh? You were. Don't buy it? for time. I'm not buying for time. <laughs> I bought it at the zoo, didn't I? Well, where do you think I bought it? Look at it. <laughs> so, did you plan before you went to the zoo not to be recognised? That was always part no, of the No, you never know, really. You go out with your kids and that, you know. And, and then when uh, you got to the zoo, you decided to. Well, it was on me. And, uh. What was on you? <laughs> People. People were on you. Not on me. No, but I mean giving you the. Drive me mad. Yeah. Right. Nice people. It's all sort of love and all that. But I needed to uh, do something about it because you know, me little one was getting the hump. You know, I was trying to look at the, you know, the the giraffes. It drugged up giraffe. The giraffe didn't look well, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> so you've, you've been around the zoo a bit. You're getting a bit of grief. You've had enough. You go to the gift shop. Any reason why you chose a child's one? Because it looks very small on your head that night. <laughs> Um, it was just the first one I picked up. I needed to get one on Lively. I actually bought it, you know, with it on. Do you know what I mean? I, I whacked it on. You didn't even want the person selling you it to recognise you. <laughs> no. did, did you not scream and say, that there's, we've got an escapee? <laughs> <laughs> Danny, where is this zoo? Um, it, I can't, I, it's, it's round the corner for me. It's, it's in Essex. It's, uh, it's only a little, little number. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a couple of rabbits in there. I mean, you know... Uh... <laughs> did you go and see the zebras? Uh, it didn't have any. Not a zebra about them. Well, you say that, you sure they weren't wearing a Danny Dyer mask? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was one, wasn't it? Yeah, it was one. It was one. I was disappointed, I ain't gonna lie. Felt bad for her, you know, I yeah. took her out on a day out and, uh, and I yeah. took her to a moody zoo. I mean, it wasn't... <laughs> moody zoo? Yeah, a moody zoo, you know, I've really promised her, I said, listen, babe, me and you are gonna go out and have a lovely day. And okay. I took her to see a couple of rabbits and a moody giraffe, you know what I mean? <laughs> So, in general, you know, it was a bit of a letdown. Do you mind just one more time placing yeah, that? Yeah, I'd love to put it on. Love to. <laughs> it's it's the, very um... small. I reckon that I could recognise you from the voice and what's yeah. showing on the face. Yeah. Mm. Was this uh, before you were on EastEnders or afterwards? Uh, this was before. So, you weren't being mobbed loads? Well, still getting it a bit, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> a, lot of my, uh, a lot of my fans... Can I take this off again now? I wish you would, yes. <laughs> yes, I'm a little I'll disturbed. No, no, you know, a lot of my fans hang out in zoos, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, you know... So, what do we think, Maura? I think he is so cool that he can do other things rather than wear a zebra mask. To, to stop, to stop the people, attention? yes. Indeed. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> Saying, hey, no. <laughs> I think you can get... <laughs> so, hang on, hang on, hang on. So, if so... <laughs> Is that what you do when people ask for photos? <laughs> Excuse me, are you Moira Stewart? <laughs> or oh, no. <laughs> so, what's so, it going to be, So, Lee? Moira says it's a lie. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's probably sure. a lie. Did you say oh, lie? OK. Yeah, a lie, yeah, a lie. I'll go with my team and say lie, then. You're going to say lie? OK. Danny, truth or lie? It's the truth. Oh. Wow! <laughs> yes, it's true. Sorry, Danny yeah. did wear a mask, so he wouldn't be recognised at the zoo. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. This week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Charlotte. <laughs> so, uh, Joe, what is Charlotte to you? This is Charlotte. In the evenings, I like to relax by watching videos of her wrapping gifts on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> right. Moira, how do you know Charlotte? This is Charlotte. She does such a good impression of me that I once let her pretend to be me on Radio 2 and no one noticed. <laughs> and Lee, what is your relationship with Charlotte? This is Charlotte <laughs> and uh, she's my judo instructor. And she, <laughs> and she told me off recently when she caught me having a pint in my judo kit just before a tournament. <laughs> <laughs> before, before a tournament? <laughs> oh, that's the very worst time to be drinking, isn't it? David, where do you want to start? Um, well, Joe, that sounds like one of the creepiest things I've ever heard. <laughs> you, you, you watch her on YouTube wrapping presents. Yes. Why? <laughs> um, because she's very good at it. That is not an explanation. <laughs> That's why you might ask her to wrap presents for you. 
not observe her doing it. <laughs> well, no, what she does, she does it... Um, she takes great care over the way she's doing it. And it, um, so she's slow. She's slow. And so very... not very good at it. So, <laughs> Joe, how, how long does it take Charlotte to, to, to wrap a present? Would you say? Um, in the videos, I think it's about half an hour. Half an hour. Half an hour. Oh, 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 God. Uh, present. What, what are these presents? She wrapped in a tank. I mean... yeah. <laughs> Why did you initially think what I need to relax is to watch someone wrapping presents on my computer? Well. I've, since I've been a child, I've had this weird sensation when I watch people with bits of paper, particularly, where I get this lovely, like, tingling in the back of my head. And I, I, was, I remember it when my grandmother was doing some paperwork and she licked her finger and turned a page and it made me feel really, really lovely. The saddest thing is the idea that when you used to go around to your grandparents' house as a child, she used to do her paperwork while you were there. <laughs> Mine used to take me out, they'd maybe cook lunch. Yeah. <laughs> Joe's coming round, brilliant. I've got some so, receipts I need to so, go through, so... <laughs> Do you think that what you're saying, John, is that because of the years of neglect that oh. Joe suffered as a child, he's come to substitute paperwork for love? <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's a relaxing thing. It's like having a massage rather than, like, a sexual thing. It's not a... Opening, I understand. I understand a video of someone getting a present and watching the joy. Watching someone wrap a present, do you get to see who opens it? Or it just gets no. wrapped and that's the end? That's, I suppose yeah. you could play it backwards, couldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, David, who else would you like to question? More, more, right. so what's, she's the best... She does the best impression of you ever. Absolutely. And how did you find this out? I walked in and on the production team on the floor, two floors down from my studio, and she happened to be in mid-wrap. She was rapping then. Oh, she well. was rapping. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just remind you of who's saying what? <laughs> she was in mid imitation. Right, okay. Wait, so right. she works at the Beam? Yes, she's a researcher. Right, okay. So she, she was mimicking you yes. behind your back. So really, take a liberty, really, in a way. <laughs> Having a giggle. And you rewarded her by whacking her. Not whacking, sorry. <laughs> You rewarded her by putting her on your show. <laughs> that was not my show. It was the Chris, Chris Evans. Chris Evans' show. show. Yeah. So she actually read a bit of your bulletin. Yes. On his show. His idea. Oh, it was his idea. Ooh, He's a little imp, and... isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so what would the introduction be? I mean, I'm trying to think now, and I, I listen to you every day. Of course, I do. The introduction is: This is BBC News on the date. I'm Moira Stewart. Good morning. I'm genuinely having a panic attack that my kids are late for school. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the bit, that's the bit that Charlotte did. Yes. Uh, it's possible. I think Moira's voice would be difficult to impersonate. Don't, but... don't encourage Rob. <laughs> <laughs> no, on this account, have a go. <laughs> All right, I'll give it a try. But if it doesn't work, you may never do Ronnie Corbett again. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. That's too great a list. <laughs> So, right. what about Lee? Lee, yes, tell us about how you got into judo in the first place. Well, how does anyone get into judo? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was watching Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> and... Oh, and ruled out Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> My kids loved it, mm -hmm. and, and so they decided to take up martial arts, and they decided to take up judo. So I took my children to the judo, and it was a bonding thing. I said, all right. They said, come on, Daddy, you do it. So I joined the, the adult class whilst they did the kids' class. How many weeks have you been going to judo? I'd say about... I've been through about 30 lessons. So it's a, like a weekly class Correct. for judo, but how does the tournament work? Well, after, after Is that we... on the same day as the class? Or... Yeah, so we do... Every week we have a class. Yeah. And then he said to the, all, the, all the, the, the men and the women in the class, he said... Who's, who's he? Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't got to Charlotte yet. I haven't got to Charlotte. <laughs> I thought she was your judo she instructor. She is. She is. She is. She is. Yes. But he said. Let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> I said. I said tournament. Tournament. How many do I said I'll do a tournament when you have a sex change, mate. <laughs> <laughs> <And> then... <laughs> so she said. She said next week we're going to have a. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of a tournament between you lot. Mm -hmm. so I thought it was just all a bit of fun. So I turned up the following week, ready for my tournament. And I got there a bit early, dropped the kids off, but the adult class starts a bit later, and I 
saw the pub. Went over. <laughs> and uh, I was chatting with the other bloke, who's one of the dads. All right, so you're both in your judo gear. Yes. What's the name for that? I call it the white dressing gown. <laughs> <laughs> and she's come bowling in. Yeah. So she's come bowling in. I said, bowling's next door. <laughs> <laughs> Why is she in the pub? Because she's looking for us, and we've gone on a bit late. Oh, you've got... Yeah, right. well, actually, that, what actually happened was she... she we were a bit what, late. Yeah, what did actually yeah. happen? <laughs> <laughs> she's walking past the pub. We were actually at the bar, sort of looking out the window, having a pint in the chat, and we literally saw someone just sort of walk past and go... <laughs> <laughs> and then come in the pub and tell us off. Because used to be in the, you know, the star pupils, obviously, you, you know, you was going to... That's not you know, how you, it works you... in martial arts, Danny. Not just the star pupils get respect. Ah. Everyone is equal. <laughs> <laughs> and what's your favourite move in judo? Because judo is full of a wide oh, variety wow. of <laughs> stances <laughs> and moves. What's the one that really gets Lee thinking... I, you had to me. narrow it down to your favourite six or seven. <laughs> 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 I think it's probably teppanyaki. Sorry? <laughs> that's, a, that's a starter dish, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's, that's the funny thing. All judo moods are named after dishes. I did the sushi, <laughs> the teriyaki, and the weird one, you're not going to believe, the pot noodle. <laughs> if you wanted to demonstrate any moves, the floor is yours. Oh, if, if, you, well. if you feel that would help <laughs> prove your point. So, well, what you do is, I mean, what would you like to see? Well, like, first of all, your, your opening stance. OK. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't do it back. <laughs> um, well, an example of a move. Rob, come out here, I'll show you. I'll show you. Uh, not in a million come years. Yeah, so get involved. Get involved. Get involved. You started it. You started this, Rob. Do you remember a minute ago when you said, get out there? You're regretting that, aren't you, Rob? <laughs> right, stand How there. well have you taught him? <laughs> stand there. Right. So what you'll do, the first, the first move you'll bow do... Bow to him, Rob, yeah, for bow. God's sake, or he'll kill you. <laughs> not, not... <laughs> can't... No, no, no. <laughs> the first thing you do... <laughs> then you'll, uh... <laughs> Should you get... You come here! <laughs> Ryan! Ryan! <laughs> you take a lapel, like this. Yeah. You will take a lapel uh, like uh, this. Yeah. OK. Uh, oh. All right, foot forward like this. Yeah. Do you, don't you dare. Do I, I do. And then you get like that, that, yeah. that, and then you sort of lean on, and then you... <laughs> <laughs> oh, So they just said in my ear, are you OK, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a BAFTA-nominated actor! <laughs> so, we need an answer. David's team, is Charlotte Joe's soothing stranger, Moira's mimicking mate, or Lee's martial arts master? Well, let's just get Lee out of the way, aren't we? It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just oi, silly. Oi, 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 come over here and say that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I did, it doesn't seem very plausible, but that was a good move. Well, 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 he goes over easy, though, didn't he? I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, think, it's, I think it's more of a... I, I, I think uh, Joe, Joe, he's an odd mark, but... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, what do you think? John, I think it's Moira. Yeah. I think we think it's Moira. I think on the basis that Lee has shown himself able to push Rob over. <laughs> and that's not nothing. At the same time, it's not much. <laughs> whoa, whoa, I'm on the... And I just the rapping thing, that's just so confusing as a thing <laughs> that I think I'm, I'm going to pretend I've never heard it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're going for Moira. He will go for Moira. Yeah, the impersonation, Moira. the first yeah. bit of the news. Exactly. OK. Charlotte, would you please reveal your true identity? My name is Charlotte, and Joe watches my videos to relax on an evening. <laughs> Thank you very much, Charlotte. Thank you. Which brings us to our final round, Pitfire Lies, and we start with... <coughs> it's Moira. On a cold winter's evening, I like to treat myself to a jacket potato 
with a melted Kit Kat on top. <laughs> David's team. And now the weather. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it sounds delicious the way Moira puts it. You know, I mean, <laughs> any any butter involved in this, or no. just a straight Kit Kat? No, this is but very, very, very hard skin. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Jacket potato. Oh, right, is, is, what's is a really the, crispy jacket very with crispy, uh, yes. and what sort of steaks the Kit Kat in? It's melted. <laughs> it's complete. What about the wafer? That doesn't really melt, does it, wafer? So. Well, it adds a sort of an interesting kick. Chun chunky or forefinger? Hmm? <laughs> Fair enough, sorry. You'll have to excuse John, he's not been speed dating before. <laughs> Only know the double Kit Kat. You've not heard of the classic four finger Kit Kat. Look, times are hard. <laughs> <laughs> when did this start, Moira? How, how did you discover this? Oh, about uh, three years ago. Really? And what sparked it off? I thought I like jacket potatoes. Who doesn't? I've done the tuna. Who hasn't? Let me try the Kit Kat. Why not? <laughs> The next, the next one is the next stage, yeah. Kit Kat. Um, Have you ever heard, Moira, of cheese? <laughs> <laughs> so just a couple of years ago, someone introduced you to it, go, listen, you want to whack a Kit Kat? <laughs> the I don't think anyone Moira knows has ever used the phrase, whack a Kit Kat on a... <laughs> I'm all right, Moira. Can I, can I ask more about the cooking process? It's very, very lengthy. <laughs> <laughs> Moira, Moira, don't push it. <laughs> I mean, obviously, of course, but at the end of it, you've got a jacket potato with a Kit Kat on it, so it's worth hours and hours of work. <laughs> you blast it in the microwave, then you put it in the oven yeah. for, oh, about 20 minutes, mm -hmm. then you halve it, then you slap the Kit Kat on top, do another 10 minutes. So what do you think, David? Is she telling the truth? I think it sounds like a disgusting meal. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the only one that thinks that actually sounds really nice? <laughs> I quite like that. Yeah. I like cars and I like chips, but I don't drive over my <laughs> chips. <laughs> Not everything that you like should be mashed together in the same... <laughs> That's rich coming from 8 out of 10 cats does count now. <laughs> 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 so what are you going to say, David? Uh, Danny, do you...? Do I you... think she's a very sophisticated woman, and I think, uh, you know, very cultured. Nowhere in the world yeah. would this lady whack a Kit Kat... <laughs> ..and a jacket potato. That's the line we go out on! <laughs> 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 well, I think, all in all, we don't believe it. So, Moira, truth or lie? I'm not having it. It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> and that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show, and I can reveal that David's team have won by three points to two. <laughs> but, of course, it's not just a team game. Uh, my individual liar of the week this week is Danny Dyer. <laughs> yes, Danny Dyer, mainly because I'm frightened of what he might do to me if I give it to someone else. Good night. <laughs>